Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and it's finally time. I've been waiting a long, long time for this, but we're finally getting a close-up look to Sunesh and Nurgle. Sunesh is my favorite god for all of you who might not be aware. So I have been waiting so long, five years to be in fact, so we can get some proper Suneshi factions. Yes, we have Sigvald, but I wanted demons. This is really exciting, it's a full trailer that's already been played at the beginning of this video. Now we're going to take a look at the video, stop a little different bits because there's a lot to talk about and it's, it's just so cool. So let's just jump right in. Okay, let's stop here and let's not worry about all the voices as there's going to be a dedicated part of the video for that. First, let's just look as to where we are. We are in some desolate area and as we can tell, it's going to be somewhere within the realms of chaos. It's not 100%, in fact, it could be a land in the northern chaos waste as we are aware that the realms themselves bleed into the mortal realm, but this could be the Sunesh Marchers. As, yeah, it kind of looks like it's, then again, there's not a lot of representation of how these territories actually look in most cases. Yet, this gives me very big vibes of just that, and even then, that's very, very little. Another reason as to why this could be a territory that is bleeding into the Realm of Chaos, or the Realm of Chaos is bleeding into that, is that, of course, this is a ruin. We can see that this is a Suneshi ruin. We'll actually see a lot of shots of this area, and obviously it's not being kept up. We'll see loads of debris in that. So it's likely that this could have been a Suneshi fortress for maybe, for example, an Aisling tribe, or pretty much anything in the northern sections. What we're also seeing is a more beautiful look towards demonettes, as you'll see later on in the video or if you've already seen the trailer. This is a common thing where they'll appear beautiful despite being quite ugly and that's kind of how they bring you in. It's the whole siren aspect of things. But let's keep on moving. Okay. 
Okay, so what we're going to see here is what is normally referred to as the Temptations of Sunesh. This is when Marauders, Chaos Warriors and stuff like that fall to the Temptations, begin worshipping and eventually get betrayed because maybe they weren't as perfect as Sunesh demands. It's always one of these things where you can follow the God of Pleasure, but you need to fit a certain look and feel in a sense. It's just like any other Chaos God, you need to follow a certain creed, and if not, you will just get ripped to shreds, and this is very obvious throughout a lot of this video, which is really cool because the showing of temptation, that even if you willingly worship Sunesh, you still eventually will be claimed. Your soul is still food for the Dark Prince of Pleasure. This is absolutely fantastic. I love the representation here. Fate is fickle. <laughs> so close. Never enough. He wants more. We all wanted more. So this is another thing to notice, you'll notice that there were mortals fighting mortals, the statues of course, and demonettes fighting demonettes. This is obviously because different keepers of secrets would want to elevate their position under the Dark Prince of Pleasure and become the favoured one. It's a thing that happens a lot because favour with Sunesh is pretty hard to attain. You can get some blessings and so on, but to be considered a higher demon, that's kind of difficult. So you will have a lot of Suneshi fighting against other Suneshi. So seeing an influence from another god in an area is not uncommon. This could be likely that Nurgle has beaten Sunesh in this area and is moving into her territories, as we know that the realms of chaos themselves are ever shifting, and funny enough, Nurgle's is right next to Sunesh. It's just one of those aspects. So this could entirely be possible, and then obviously, you know, it's Nurgle versus Sunesh video, so they need to bring that in. Which is exactly what we've just seen on screen right now. It's the constant shift of the balance of power and how quickly things can change. So this in fact could be within the Sunesh marches and it could have literally just been that Nurgle has sent an advance and taken over. It's so common that it happens on a day-to-day -day basis where the gods will just keep taking, gaining and losing power. This is a fantastic representation of it. I must say that like, the whole trailer is just freaking great. And we're already getting shown a lot of units, in fact we saw some at the beginning, but this is a decent look. We got the Great Unclean one up there, which is absolutely massive, it just looks so cool. We got Nurglings, Nurglings were already confirmed by the artwork and so on, but it's just nice to see them there. We've got Rotflies and obviously Chaos Spawn of Nurgle. At this point it's easy to say that everyone's going to get Chaos Spawn because we have a few reskins all over the place, but this is cool, this is absolutely awesome. Okay, these are very important. We got the standard demonettes that we were already expecting and Fiends of Sunesh. These are one of my absolute favorite units from the tabletop. I'm just so happy to see them because, I mean, we were expecting them anyway, but like, they just look really, really good. Okay, and over here, we've got the Keeper of Secrets, which is on the left-hand side. She's got a shield and a sword. We can't really see it too well, but we've already known that we were going to get one. Then, obviously, we've got some different Sunesh chariots, which is obviously great. The flying things on the top are obviously Chaos Furies of Sunesh. And right behind, we've got perhaps one of the most exciting units, because they were really good on the tabletop when you played as Warriors of Chaos. These are Marauders on Steeds of Sunesh. You can have them as Hellstriders. They had different types of weapons. So far, we've only seen the Spear, which is what we can get over there. But yeah, great, great. This means that we're going to get a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah. 
And here we have the legendary lord for Nurgle's forces, Korgarth Plaguefather. In his own specialized palanquin of Nurgle, it's supposed to be pulled around by a bunch of Nurglings and so on, but since they changed it for Greasers to have a cart, they've given him more of a slant approach, which I think works quite well to be honest. He looks good. I like the look. One thing that you'll notice right next to him on the right hand side are Plague Toads of Nurgle. Now this is extremely surprising, mainly because this is a Forge World monster and so far, no base game race has ever started with a Forge World unit. They've always gotten them through DLC and so on. This is very exciting because, yeah, they're cool. Like, it's just cool factor. <laughs> Okay, this isn't the best frame, but what you, you will notice on the right hand side are some Seneshi Marauders with their own special Seneshi shields and armor and so on. Now, this is very cool because obviously, yes, it's a reskinned unit because these are coming from the Marauder units that are actually mounted on the Steeds of Sinesh, but I have asked and they've said that anything that we're seeing on foot here is assumed to be part of the roster, which means we have Seneshi Marauders actual proper Suneshi Marauders. This is really cool as someone who plays on the tabletop because I spent countless hours kit bashing them and so on and I wanted a unique look. Maybe they'll be counted as Suneshi Warriors of Chaos but I think it's better yet said to be called Marauders. But this is cool. We actually see a shot of them. It's just really hard with these fast moving frames with the attached spear and so on. I'm just really excited about this. I'm really really excited about this. Actually, here's a better frame. Sorry about that. You'd think I'd know, considering I've watched this trailer like a hundred times now, but uh, yeah, we all make mistakes. So they've got the attached spears and so on. This is exactly like the unit that you see on the actual model. And as far as I've been told, they're going to be on foot too. So this is great. I'm actually really happy about this as, yeah, you will have some anti-large, which will be very useful, especially, you know, against ogres and so on. So Nesh didn't really have a lot of options when it came to this. The roster was always tiny. So making up new units is always great. Now, if we can get these as miniatures too, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Okay, so it hasn't been outright confirmed, but this is likely to be Nakari, unless they've decided to go with another Unknown Keeper of Secrets or one of the other named ones, but Nakari was always the big one. Obviously, big drastic change from the original look, but then again, we've only had art. This is more in line with that of the um, Age of Sigmar ones and so on. It's a complete new change, though it looks freaking great. Like, we don't even have this as a model for Age of Sigmar. And I, I want a Nakari model. This, this 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 is great. This is just great. Despite the fact that Nakari never had an actual model in Warhammer Fantasy lore, it's easy enough to say that Nakari is one of the most important greater demons from the whole pantheon. It actually shows up in a lot of big plot points and so on. And damn, like this is cool. This is really cool. <laughs> So what's the advisor doing here, or at least it can be assumed to be the advisor. So there's a bit of a theory here between myself and some other content creators that this is where we start to see him fall. You see, we've seen him in different points of his life. We've seen him a bit older, we've seen him a bit younger, and now we're seeing him at a pretty youngish state. Keep in mind he's still a wizard, so he's still going to have to be relatively old. We are likely seeing him as he has completely fallen to Zinch at this point, most likely, and he's traveling around the Chaos Realms maybe to learn and, well, we actually even see Nakari, or what can be assumed to be Nakari, trying to tempt him, trying to make him fall to Sunesh, which is a regular thing. You do get some tribes of Chaos Warriors dedicated to, say, for example, Sunesh, who can fall to Nurgle, and so on and so forth. We don't get a good look at what book he has. It could be like a Liber Chaotica or something, which could be the reason as to how he got to the realms of chaos without, you know, dying. But I guess more of this is going to be shown off when they start giving us plot points of Warhammer 3, as I have a feeling that this has a lot to do with Warhammer 3's plot. One thing is certain, however, I have the text which is part of this video, and it is as follows. Come then, exile. What you seek is within. Will you share their fate? 
This is when he's moving in through the area, so it's likely that this is already temptation starting to begin. He carries the tome, a pact with the architect. Fate is fickle. So close, never enough. He wants more. We all wanted more. So the book itself could be the Liber Chaotica or the Liber Malefic, as these are very powerful books that detail a lot of stuff about the realms of chaos, demons, and so on, very coveted by Zinchians for obvious reasons. The architect being mentioned is of course Zinch, because, well, he's the architect of fate, and there's a clear shout out to him, considering the fact that obviously the advisor is Zinchian. We've seen that in the Warhammer 1 trailers that he eventually does fall as he tries to betray Archeon the Everchosen, and and then Zinch decides to make him bird food. But let's move on to the next parts. You answered the call of the flesh, only to be enslaved by it. But in his embrace, we are not afraid. We are reborn as death. I must admit that it's very, very cryptic. I've been looking through a lot of different Warhammer books, and I've not been able to find much. He is obviously being tempted, and I do have a theory, but then let's continue with this before we jump into that. So next we have, I have the knowledge you crave, but all pleasure comes at a price. So this is something very important to note, as the advisor, yes, is Zinchian, but knowledge too can also be quite pleasuresome, which is why Sunesh, or Nekari at this point, has a very easy way to try and tempt this sorcerer. I mean, we've practically seen that there on the trailer, and it could be the case. Then again, it's always the case that Warhammer Fantasy has had always a lot of consistent, but also consistently inconsistent lore. Yep, I know, it's a head scratch. Now, I do have a little theory here regarding this image on screen, which is that this is nothing to do with Sinesh. This is actually Belakor. There's a few reasons as to why. We've had multiple voices on the trailer, so that could be already there. Then the fact is that the face of this is kind of skeletal, very much reminiscent to that of Belakor's old model. And then finally, you've got to take into account that something about this does not look very Sineshi if you're a Sineshi fan. This is more grim, ghastly, shadowy, you know? This isn't what Suneshi stuff tends to look like. Even the demon's true forms do not look like this. And it's very strange that this is in a Suneshi camp. Not only that, but it's, it's nothing to do with Nurgle. It's nothing to do with Kord. It's nothing to do with Zinch. It's very out there. It's very shadowy figure, and we've already had kind of shadowy figure hints when it comes to other trailers. So, yeah. I'm keeping with my thought that this is Bellacor. It's the only thing that really makes sense to me. I could be wrong, but I don't think that many other creators are thinking differently, as I did speak to a few of them. Obviously, the references of being reborn as death is very close to Nurgle, but even Nurgle doesn't really have the representation of a corpse. That's very strange. The Nurgle influence is obviously there, we've seen the mark of Nurgle, but we wouldn't see demonettes going to worship Nurgle or anything as a representation of Nurgle, it just doesn't make any sense. We're gonna have to wait and see, because I think that this might be tied to the plot point. Maybe they're trying to throw everyone off, because that does make sense, Creative Assembly have been trying to do that lately. So it could very much be a nod to both. I wouldn't really put it past them. In terms of units, nothing's really surprising, as, well, pretty much everything that's been added in has been missing from a Warriors of Chaos army book, or that of the Demons of Chaos army book for the respective gods. The only thing that is surprising is that of the Suneshi Marauders, as I really wasn't expecting that after everything that happened with the Zinchian thing, but I did talk to a member from Creative Assembly and they did say that anything that we see in the trailer is to be expected in the roster, I've said this before, I'm hammering this again because if it's not, I'm going to be very disappointed because I'm hyped up for this, you guys are going to be understandably angry too, but like, you know, I, 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 I need more Suneshi things, please. Obviously, the full roster hasn't been shown off from both sides, as, well, this is only the introduction trailer, and we'll start getting more as time progresses. Though, so far, we should be quite happy, considering that we've seen some unique stuff for Sunesh, we've seen some really cool reveals for Nurgle, the Beast of Nurgle, the Plague Toads, and so on. So, everything's looking great. We've obviously seen some reskins, too, but that was to be expected. Everyone's gonna have some sort of reskin to tie them all together as centralized chaos. And, yeah, this is great. This is probably the best trailer 
trailers so far. My only real problem with these trailers is that they move to different scenes too quickly and there's not a lot of time to be able to analyze. Thankfully we do have some screenshots that we'll be able to check but they're very Nurgle centric. So for the first screenshot we obviously have Korgarth Plaguefather. This is the legendary lord for Nurgle as was always expected. Very cool character. He's flanked by two different great unclean ones and they look big boys too so yeah man this is cool. This is really really cool. I'm having a lot of fun looking at the Nurgle stuff that's for sure. We've obviously got some Nurglings and obviously some Rotflies. They are the mounted version though. I'm not sure if there's any which have like an unmounted variant. I didn't see that in the trailer but then again I'm half blind as it is. Though already very good start. Next we have another screenshot and I think this is the Lord version of the Great Unclean one. The other one had a blade, it didn't have the headdress, well it's a rag but you know what I mean. This one has the bell, it's got some chains. So I'm imagining that this is the Lord version, the exalted Great Unclean one, and the one in the previous, well the other two in the previous screenshot would be the standard one. Now we've obviously got some Nurglings once again. We've got a Beast of Nurgle up there with its hair going all wild. Well, tentacles. We've got a mounted version of the Plague Toad, which is right next to the Beast of Nurgle. That's pretty cool, because we did see an unmounted, so that means that we're likely going to get two, which makes a lot of sense. A Herald of Nurgle is there too. It's just the Plague Bearer, and obviously some standard Plague Bearers behind him. Again, the Rot Flies, but they all look like the mounted version. Still, that's already a lot. We've seen a lot of units. We've also seen some reskins and so on. So there's a lot of stuff coming for Nurgle, a lot of really cool stuff, unique looking stuff too. This is going to be quite good. And obviously, lastly, we have a screenshot of Grandfather Nurgle's domain. And wow, just wow, this looks incredible. Keep in mind that even as a tabletop player for many years, we don't get a lot of representation of the Realms of Chaos. So anytime something like this drops, it's, it's just stunning. It's wow. It just looks so cool. Like I can't wait to fight over this and take it over and turn it Suneshi. You know, this is just amazing. The art team is really going full ham. They really deserve a lot of praise because like seriously, goddamn, this is just awesome. Now, of course, we've just entered the cycle of Nurgle and Sinesh, so it's going to take a while before we get all the information. Hopefully Creative Assembly aren't too slow for this, because, like, I'm really curious to see the campaign mechanics for not only Sinesh, funny enough, but Nurgle too. Nurgle's always been a very popular god, especially by, well, pretty much any developer that's made a Warhammer game. For some reason, he's always front and center. So I'm expecting him to have something really cool, considering that he's so popular, they're going to have to make him really fun. The Sinesh thing is so important important because Sinesh has always been on the back end of the Warhammer Fantasy scale. There's never really been a lot of stuff and it's only been very recently with Age of Sigma that Sinesh has gotten updates for models and new models and unique stuff. So it's really cool that we're finally getting a look. Like the Keeper of Secrets is just awesome looking. Nakari looks awesome. I just really want some more screenshots. I want some more stuff. Right, I think I've been fanboying and rambling for way too long today. We've had a lot of discussions and so on. What do you guys think about Sonesh and Nurgle? I'm really curious to see what you guys think. This is such an important topic to me. I'm going to be hanging out on the YouTube comment section for a while. So let's have a conversation. Let's talk about this because this is going to be super cool. And I'm really excited. Like I've been hyped up for Warhammer 3 for a while now. But now, you know, when you get the faction that you want, that you've been playing on the tabletop for so long and so on, now they're finally coming. I've had to wait five years for a reveal like this, but hey, it's better late than never. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. 
And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.